Hello crafty friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie. This week we are celebrating our very good friend Chelsea for achieving 10,000 subscribers right here on YouTube. Now if you're growing a channel here on YouTube, you know that that's a lot of work and we are all here at the creative design team celebrating our very good friend. For my project today, I decided to scrap lift this beautiful layout right here and it's kind of ironic because this is the layout I had challenged Chelsea to only use five items. So in that true form and in that true challenge, I'm going to see if I can recreate this layout with only five items. My five items are right here on my desk. I've got pattern paper, die cuts, ink, thin cuts, and a stamp and thin cut. So I do hope that that counts for one. So if we count them quickly, one, two, three, four, five. Chelsea, I think I've got this. So let's start this layout and let's see how successful I am with using minimal supplies. This layout was inspired by the sketch on page 23. This is the sketchbook from the creative design team. It is the eight and a half by 11. And I really like the way Chelsea kind of took that as her inspiration and then transformed it into a 12 by 12. So of course, all of those sketches can be adapted to any size that you want to scrapbook. So for my layout, I'm using my pattern paper, a white base, and then I'm gonna bring in my photos right here. And I'm going to place them very much the same way Chelsea did. I felt that first I had a lot of photos and um, it lended itself to the layout and the composition. We're gonna add this one here and then this one. Now, when I added all of my photos, I realized that I didn't leave myself anywhere to do my journaling. So what I will do, I will add my journaling right here at the back. This is a baby album that I've been working on and I'm just kind of working my way through it. And I thought that this looked really good. You'll notice here that I double matted these two photos only because it was tone on tone and they didn't show as much. And then with the clustering, we'll address this in the photo. You know, there's a label, there's a little pillow here, and we can totally camouflage that. These were all original photos. So when I was cropping them down, I was quite happy to see that they all fit on a double page layout. Very much like Chelsea, I went ahead and I cut a few circles. This is three and three quarters. We have a two and a half and a three inch. And these act as anchors when you do your clustering. So I'm gonna add the biggest one here at the bottom. And then we're going to add the little one here at the top and the medium one here. So you can definitely cut them the size that you have available to you. You can see right here that we are creating balance on this page and we have created that really nice visual triangle. I will have a title right here at the top and we'll do that together. But this is how my clusters are going to start. The next thing I did, I pulled out this stamp set right here and I stamped a whole bunch of these circles that match the pattern paper just to create myself options to embellish my little clusters. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to distribute them. Now I picked three colors for them. I picked the Carolina color for stamping, the sapphire, and then this here is Sundance. I did go ahead and I did sand my cardstock so it reveals some of the white core and then I just stamped toned on tone. The full strength was really really bright on this layout. I did want to bring a pop of color but I didn't want to overdo it. So you can see here I've got a selection of three. I'm going to walk you through this selection process. And then I did the same thing. I brought in another selection of three. So I have the same colors if you want. So we're gonna have this one here. And then I have another selection of three that I'm gonna bring down here. And this is how we're gonna hide that little tag on that pillow right here. When you are building your clusters, it's always a good thing to have an anchor point 
instead of having everything kind of loose and floating on your page. So we're going to start here and I'm going to add one and then I'm going to, it's always nice also to tuck some underneath your photo and three. So you've got your one, two, three, and they're resting on this circle. We're going to do the same thing up here. We've got our resting spot if you want and then i'm going to add some of these other ones right on top and we're not done yet this is just the first layer if you want this one right here is underneath again we've got our resting spot i'm going to add this one underneath because it's a good contrast on that color i'm going to hide this label on that pillow because I'm not a fan and then I'm going to add another one here now because I'm really going over I'm going to cheat and I'm going to add another one and this one can go right here I usually like to do threes but this one here I'm going to add four and you'll see when we add the next set of embellishments for the next layer of our clusters, I did pull this die set right here. It is the layered leaves. It's been in my stash for a long time. And I really liked this one here. It kind of reminded me of the pattern on this pattern paper right here. So if you have anything that resembles this pattern or any leaves in your stash, I think that it's a good way to further embellish all of these circles. Just to save on time here, I did go ahead and I did die cut a whole bunch of these and these are done in mink. That's another color that is in this collection. So I'm gonna start tucking them here and there underneath. Definitely I will, you know, play with them more once I add glue, but you can see that it really elevates the cluster just by adding a few of those sprigs. So we're going to add one here, and then I'm going to add one right here. This one here is going to be a little tricky because I have to make sure that I can put it in and it doesn't fall off the page. And then this one here I think is going to look really pretty against the sapphire blue. That looks really, really pretty. And we're going to add another one here. So you can see here that I've elevated those clusters just by adding a few sprigs. Now the final touch for these clusters, I am going to pull some of these die cuts. It is part of this collection. It is quite dark though, so I decided just to use a couple of their, the hearts that are in here. And uh, I'm just going to add them to this stamped image right here. And again, if you have noticed, I am repeating elements on all of these clusters, and that's what creates balance on your page. I'm going to go ahead and adhere all of these pieces down, and we're going to come back and do our title. Our title is going to go right up here, and I'm going to do a very similar technique, the one that Chelsea used for her journaling card, and you'll see how pretty this is going to turn out for our title. So let me adhere all of these pieces down, and we'll do the title together. I wanted to show you during my assembly for my clusters, I do go ahead and I do put the circles, like the big elements, down first, just to help me anchor my photos. And this particular photo here, I know that I'm going to add my journaling tag right in back. So I am going to add just a little bit of 3D foam tape. Now this is the thin 3D foam tape, and it's going to act as a pocket. So it'll be easier to pull when people want to read the milestone for month number six. So this is something that I like to do. It doesn't create too much bulk, but you definitely have to think about it before you adhere your piece down. I've gone on all three sides, and when I add my journaling piece, and right now you can see that this is just a test, it's just on regular copy paper, I'm going to have to adjust that so that it fits right inside 
this is one of the reasons why I like to kind of just print these on regular copy paper. So when I'm figuring out where I want to add it, I can make some adjustments. This is going to go right here inside this photo. I'm going to print that on cardstock, but I thought I'd show you what I do when I build my clusters. I'm going to add my photos here. When you use thin 3D foam tape, there's not a lot of difference between the three photos, but it will allow this to slide in and out much easier. All right, everything is adhered down. I didn't completely adhere down this piece until I finish my journaling. This is another tip that I've learned from Chelsea. Don't be afraid to mix your enamel dots to really make your page pop. So we're going to add a few where our clusters are just to finish them off and I think I'm going to mix them up. I do want to bring in the pop of yellow but I didn't want it to be too too much so we're going to add I think you've got this one that would go and you've got the darker I think I'll go with the darker ones. So mix the, mixing these up is a good idea because you can see here that I don't have a lot of the darker blue but I think I'm going to introduce the hearts and that's gonna work just as nice. And I'm gonna have that pop of color that I'm looking for. I'm basically just adding a few here and there just to add that really nice pop. And it kind of just adds a little sprinkle of color. Let's take a look at those clusters before we work on that pretty title. I think a mixture of both is really cute and if you have like on these sheets right here you don't have a whole lot of them mixing them up is actually a really good thing now i debated adding more but i think i'm going to try and keep it simple but i really do like the pop let's work on our title that's going to go right up here i am going to use the stamp and thin cut and i am going to use the word adorable i think that it's going to work really nicely for this layout and I am working on French vanilla. This is not white. The base is not white. So I'm continuing on with some scraps. And I'm going to work with my Misty here. So let's take the word adorable. And we're going to gently pull that back. It's a full piece. You can see that I did do a bit of a test here. So we're going to pop that in. Very much like Chelsea, I'm going to add different colors to my title, and I think it's really going to complete this layout. So let me just get situated here. We're going to start with the center, and I'm just going to try and keep it on the flower. I don't think it matters too, too much if it goes over. The reason why I'm using my Misty here is that I want it to be nice and saturated so I can go back a few times. So we've got the little flower and then at the top we're going to add the Carolina ink. Let's see what that's going to look like. That's looking really nice. So you can see that, that one pass is not quite enough. This is a solid stamp and adding multiple passes is definitely going to make this sentiment pop. I'm gonna go at least twice. I'm gonna add a little bit of the darker blue at the bottom. You see that's nice and vibrant. We're going to add some right here at the bottom. These are all colors that are within this collection. And um, you will see that it really, really adds to the page. Now I'm going to blend that in a little bit so that there's not a harsh line. And we're going to stamp. And I think that that looks really good. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to do this three times. We're going to die cut it. We're going to add it to our layout. I think that that's going to look really, really good on the page. Let's go die cut this and we'll finish the layout. I did go ahead and I did die cut 
about four of the same one and I'm going to add it here and I think that once we put that on it's just going to give it a little bit more presence. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the top down. Now you can definitely use 3D foam tape but I find that when you stack cardstock it just gives it more stability and longevity in your albums. So I'm going to go ahead and squish this together add a couple of blocks just to secure it down and then I will add it to our layout and we'll go through the completed project. Okay let's finish this layout. I'm sure that this is nice and dry by now and again I think that it is worth the time and effort just to stack them up. I think that's going to look really really great. Let's bring out our layouts right here. I'm going to tack this down with some glue only because there is some weight to it and I want to make sure that it stays down. I'm going to add some glue right in the center so that if I have to move this, let me just move my glue out of the way. We're going to tack this just like so. I'm going to bring in my T ruler to make sure that I am nice and straight. I'm going to press that in. Oh, that moved just a tiny bit. Let me test that again. This is why I put glue in the center. All right, let's hold this down for a sec. I think that that looks really, really good. Let's take a look at this and see if, just like Chelsea, I was able to meet the challenge of only using five items to create this layout. I think I did. I think the challenge has been met. I was able to create this gorgeous layout with five items from my stash. I was able to do some pretty neat stamping and overall add all of these photos on a 12 by 12 layout. So I really like the way that Chelsea redistributed all of the photos and it was perfect for this layout. Now, if you want to see more videos from the creative design team where we are all celebrating our very good friend Chelsea, you're going to want to catch that right here at the end of this video. I will list the full playlist. Once again, Chelsea, congratulations. I'm so glad to call you my friend and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. If you're looking for more inspiration when creating layouts for a baby album, Click this video right here on the left. See you there.